Hi, and welcome to another Access Chat. Uh, we're really pleased to have Sean Douglas here today. Uh, Sean has started something which is fantastic. It's called The Codcast. It's um, a, a podcast dedicated to um, all things sort of arty, inspirational, um, and uh, with a focus on people with dyslexia and their achievements, and there's a number of sort of spin-off projects uh, from that. So um, as people will know by now, I'm also dyslexic, so it's a passion for me. So I was immediately attracted by the content that, that Sean's producing and uh, wanted to get Sean on. So welcome, Sean. Great to have you here. Um, Thanks for having me on the show. Yeah. Oh, no, it's, it's a real pleasure. So tell me what it was that, that really started you off um, wanting to, to put together something like the cod past. <laughs> <laughs> have a tongue twister all, all, all through this now. But yeah, what was it that inspired you and got you started? Um, I mean, I guess it's, it's quite a long story, really, how the cod past came into being. But really, there was a lack of content um, and resources that I found for people of kind of university age, leaving university and going into the world of the work. So people that are working, people that are searching for jobs and, and need help, there wasn't anything for them. There's a lot of dyslexic help for children um, in high school and, 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 you know, going up into higher education. And then there's loads of resources for parents that have dyslexic kids. And in the middle, there was a massive void. And I thought, you know, who's doing something for this audience? So that's kind of one of the catalysts for the COD Pass. But the, the real catalyst was I, am you know, I, I worked and I wasn't diagnosed at school and got into the world of work and knew I was dyslexic. But once you leave education, you've got to pay something like £400 in the UK to do the test. And I thought, well, why pay £400 to be told something I already know. So I'd moved to another city and was, was working at another place and I got diagnosed. Um, and then I'd worked in TV and I was working in a big kind of corporate company um, as a video producer and uh, they closed the department. And I'd always gone through interesting um, paths to get to where I needed to be. So I thought I was a producer, but I had some gaps in my knowledge. So I'll take a job as an assistant producer. And as soon as I got this job, people started piling paperwork on me and, you know, stuff that wasn't done in an organised way, other people's stuff. And I was coming in to work at, you know, six in the morning, trying to get on top of this stuff because I knew I was a great producer, but to be able to start producing content, I had to get on top of this paperwork and I just couldn't do it. Um, so after three months um, of working there, I had my review and I was brought into the manager's office and basically in uncertain terms, I was told that I was slow, uh, no one liked my work, why did I come in at six o'clock in the morning because no one else did? Um, and they said, you know, we're not happy with what you've done, we're really disappointed with you, um, we'll give you another month. And um, to that, I basically the next day walked in and said, I'm leaving because, you know, why would you want to be in a place that has that opinion of your work? Um, so at that point, I was like, well, this is the first time I've been in a situation where dyslexia has been so devastating to me. Um, I want to go and get some help. And all that was around was stuff for kids. And I, I, I did go to a few things for adults, but because they are so kind of underfunded, there wasn't, there wasn't that breadth of, of resource. There was stuff for people that were really, really, really severely dyslexic and then nothing else. So I ended up going to kids tutors and things like that. Um, and then there's a dyslexic meetup in London and, um, I went to one of their events. There's about 80 dyslexics. They were all telling their stories, lawyers, artists, everything. And I just thought these stories are amazing. You know, when I was at school and struggling, I'd love to have heard these stories. You know, we all hear about Richard Branson, which is great. But when you're a kid at school, Richard Branson's a million miles away from, from where you are. Yeah, I agree. You can't relate. He's, exactly. He's too remote. Exactly. And so I just wanted to create a place where there was people could go and hear these stories and from people that they identify with, you know, someone from your background, someone that's got grown up the way you have, or someone who has your aspirations or has done what you want to do. Um, these stories that you could just go, right, that could be me. And that was basically the catalyst, you know, and I thought I love podcasts. For me, podcasts are great and consuming audio, um, content via audio is much better than newspapers and things. And I thought, right, the best way to do this is via a podcast. Okay. Wow. So um, it's really 
disheartening to to hear the fact that you'd had such a tough call in, in, in that job, but it's not uncommon. So I, I, I spend a lot of time providing services to people in the workplace, and it's not uncommon when people change jobs that suddenly where they've been coping all of their life and, and doing really well, the, the change in what they're doing, the, the excess paperwork, all of this kind of stuff suddenly just causes some kind of catastrophic meltdown. Now, the thing that, that's really important is to come out the other side um, and, 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 and take some positivity out of it. And um, yeah, you're right, there's very little material out there for, for adult dyslexics mm. that isn't, um, you know, Really, for people with the you know the most severe um, problems, yeah, you know, I I don't, I don't find much out there that relates to me and, and, and my working life. Particularly, the assumption is I can't read and write, and that I transpose letters. <laughs> none of which is true. Um, so, but. I can't, you know, I can't dial a phone number. Um, you know, I, I can't remember my wallet to take my to, to go and get my shopping today. You know, two trips to the supermarket today. Um, second one just to come and get my money. Uh, so, so yeah, I, I totally relate, and I think it's great what you're doing. I've listened to some of the some of the materials, and 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 it's really nice to to have a mixture of um, high profile figures like um, Peter Stringfellow and um, people like Displa um, coming on and talking about stuff that 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 people can relate to. It's mm. fantastic. Deborah, you you look like you were speaking. Were you on mute? Yes, <laughs> which is a good thing because I was interrupting you. So <laughs> good thing I was muted. <laughs> um, what you know? Um, what an inspiring story, Sean. And it, it's interesting because. Um, that's really why all of us are here on Access Chat. Um, also, as you know, having um, in the first place, having such courage to say, "Yeah, uh, you yeah, place for me." And I think back on my very long career, on the times when I wasn't in the right place, and, and I'm not dyslexic, but I um, I have a daughter with Down syndrome, and I've, you know, I, I find that. I, over the years that I've learned the most from my, quote, perceived failures. Sometimes I think they're my failures. Sometimes other people think it's failures. And um, I just really applaud you for saying, yeah, you know what? Well, you obviously don't deserve me. And so I'm going to go out and I'm going to do something really amazing. But I recently have surrounded myself with really amazing leaders that also happen to have dyslexia. Like um, I have a good friend, Dr. Christopher Lee at Georgia Tech, who will, uh, they were putting him in special education and pretty much he couldn't learn and tell them, you know, what they do to people's self-esteem trying to help you. Sometimes it's frightening. But um, And Neil is a brilliant example of what can be achieved. But I just think you bring up such a good point because we try to help people you know, that, for example, people with dyslexia in school, but when you get out, good luck with that. And, yeah. you know, I'm so glad Richard Branson is so successful, and he's probably successful at least partially because of his dyslexia. Mm -hmm. But what can you now, you leaders, you and, and Neil and Christopher and Richard Branson, what can y'all do to help the dyslexics that are coming up behind you to encourage them to be really proud of who they are and to contribute to the world because it's not a mistake that you have dyslexia. Your brain just works differently, but there's such power in that. There's mm -hmm. such power in our brains working differently from each other in solving very complicated social problems. So I just want to really applaud you for um, everything you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. So. Sean, I've got I've got another sort of question based around what what you're doing. You've you also started looking into um, doing technology reviews and you're doing video reviews on on. Um, I know you went to the Bet Show mm -hmm. somewhere. I I haunted for for many a January. <laughs> um, so what's the plan with the with the tech reviews? Is it just to put stuff into a format that that gets it out there that so that people can see that there are tools that might be right for them? Yeah, I mean, there's there's so much. I mean, and we just keep coming up with new ideas. You know, originally the podcast was a monthly podcast that I was going to put out, and that and that was it. 
and I quickly realized, well, a monthly podcast wouldn't sustain an audience, you know, um, a month is a long time for wait to wait for more content. So then we started blogging um, and blogging is something I'd never have thought of doing, you know, being dyslexic, writing was the last thing that I wanted to do and it, you know, brought me out in hives thinking about writing. But, you know, we started off slowly and I've realized that I actually quite like writing, you know, um, you probably find loads of spelling mistakes and grammar errors in what I write, but you know, I, I, I've got commended on some of this stuff and people have asked me to do guest blogs for them and things. Um, so we started blogging and then we thought, we got, you know, we've been reaching out because we really want the Codpass to be a place that is kind of a global hub for dyslexia that promotes everything to do with dyslexia. So we we found a, a girl called um, Sarah Fern who runs a um, project called Disbooks, um, which is just about finding the right books for you as dyslexic. And now she does our book reviews, so we now have a book review show. And then one of the things I do with my podcast, which is probably shooting myself in the foot is I, I want the quality to be as good as possible. It needs to be radio broadcast quality. And at some point potentially is something we will sell to a radio station or maybe broadcast on air. Um, so I have my humble home studio here and every guest that we have has to come to the studio, which is really difficult when you're trying to get high profile people on. And sometimes we do go on location, but there's people in um, America, there's people in Australia, there's people in Africa, and I really want to tell their stories. So we created another podcast, which is called Audio Blog, um, where we interview people over the telephone. Um, so the audio quality is not as good, but what we do to counteract that is a lot of the podcasts that are happening in the US, like 99% um, Invisible, and there's a whole movement called Radiotopia that does these fantastically produced um, podcasts. So we, we kind of take from that and the audio quality is not great, but the stories are amazing and we use sound effects and they're narrated. So they're, they're almost like um, short documentaries. So we've got all of these kind of outlets to tell different stories. The Copass is very much interview based. Audio blog can be anything we want it to be. It could be a poem. It could be a bit of poetry. It could be anything. It could be a, a roundtable discussion. Then we've got audio blogs, which is great for literacy and you know being a podcast lover audio books are just one step away and for me it's a great way to to kind of get on the radar you know people always talk about literature and it's such a cultural reference you know this book and this character and even in quizzes you know you're asked about characters but sometimes how do you get into that you know how, how do you become part of that conversation without being able to read those books and so many audio books i've listened to have been you know allowed me to get into those conversations and go well yeah i know who this is and who that is um so that started there and then we started doing videos um so one of the things we were doing is just looking out there um what's um what's out there and what's doing well online and how are people consuming their content um and these unpacking videos and things are doing really well and that's kind of what we wanted to do kind of um videos where we can get products find what products are new that help dyslexics and review them and again there's nothing like that in text or in video but you know it's the kind of thing that we want to do in video so you know we'll be moving more with the tech reviews and hopefully getting brands involved and tech companies involved and we've had a few companies send us apps that you know we're just waiting to um to, to get the time really to, to to produce the videos and that's one of the things you know we really want to work with people we're always reaching out to to find people so our content can become much richer because at the moment the majority of everything you see on that podcast is produced by myself so what's written the podcasts um the videos i narrate them i write the scripts you know i've got a small team i have um someone who helps me with all the social media and you know some of the, the back end stuff and checking spelling and we have an intern that comes in one day a week but you know, what I want this to be is a fantastic resource for people. And that can't just come from my head. You know, we have to have bloggers. And we had we had a fantastic blog by a girl called uh, Rosie Edmonton, who is dyslexic and dyspraxic. And she's you know made quite a name for herself talking about dyspraxia. And, you know, we hope to talk about the other things that are conditions that people have with dyslexia and that don't get as much coverage. So we want to find contributors and writers and journalists and content producers as well to kind of bolster this and, and just make this a fantastic resource um and, and one of the other things that why why i started the, the cop past is because when i did go out there and look for information about dyslexia it's all quite static i mean there are people doing things there's great bloggers who create content and blog about their, their experience but when you go onto websites there's a thousand websites that have a, a page called famous dyslexics and those pages haven't been updated for years. You know, there's just the list and they're there. 
but what we wanted to do was bring that to life so we've got the, the videos we've got you know top 10 hottest dyslexic women and top 10 hottest dyslexic men which just bring that <laughs> to life and you know people yeah. did say well why aren't you doing doing something so superficial as top 10 hottest yeah. women but when it became you know when they watch it and they see that marilyn monroe is number one everyone's jaw dropped marilyn right. monroe is dyslexic so um that's <laughs> kind of what we're doing with the content uh, i think it's important because you're, you're hooking into the the fascination on on social media of lists everyone everyone's a sucker for lists yeah um can't help it i know it's linked by going there anyway um so yeah that that that's great and I, also i totally understand where you're coming from in terms of the the load you're putting yourself under yeah um, by wanting to do this thing it's obvious you've got passion um something that we can relate to because we've just started access chat six months ago and it's snowballing and there's loads of um loads of good things happening but there's loads of work involved too. um so um i'm assuming you have a you know a day job as well then you're trying to you know do all the you know, video production on the sidelines and and yes we we fully admit that our video quality is cruddy um but we're we're, we're of the the sort of uh pile them high, sell them cheap kind of <laughs> mentality. We're just getting the content out there right now. Well, yeah, I mean, there, there's space for everything, isn't there? Yeah. I mean, this is great because it is so quick. You know, yeah. you can reach out to people all over the world um, and, and and make things happen as well. You know, it's, it's content really, isn't it? If the content's good, in some ways, it doesn't matter what, what the video quality looks like. No, well, but I mean, I, I do, I do, you know, I, I work... Um, I do some of the work with a, a large broadcaster, and you know I do admire their um, good quality video content. But, uh, but, yeah, but, I mean but, it's again I, I kind of shoot myself in the foot because it does take so much time. When when we think about you know maybe one podcast that could be five days of work. You know um, finding the guest, interviewing the guest, mm-hmm. transcribing the pre-interview, creating a, the format for the show, um, recording the show editing the show, uploading the show, metadata, publicising the show. Um, and we, you know, we aim to do three podcasts a week, uh, a month, sorry. So you can see how much work that is. Um, you know, we just put out a blog um, post today, actually, which is called um, five, five Accessibility Options You Didn't Know Existed in Your iPad. And um, again, the content we try and create is really rich. So it is a blog, but every blog, we kind of have guidelines. Every blog has to have a piece of media that goes with it, at least one piece of a, a picture, a video, some audio um, that um, accompanies it. Because when you are dyslexic and you just see this sea of text, it can be really off-putting. I mean, I'd never read a blog until I started writing them. Um, but ha- having that content really brings it to life. But that blog probably took us about four days to create. We went to the bet show, we met people, we came back, we then went through the iPad and then we created the videos and that that's just one blog. So yeah, on top of the day job, it is um, a mammoth undertaking and it is something that, you know, ideally we would like to monetize um, and it become, you know, my main occupation because to, to continue to produce that kind of thing at that level, it just takes a lot of resources. And at the moment, all of the resources come out of my bank account. So, um, you know, it's something that we do hope, uh, you know, something that in its current state, you know, we're giving it a year. And if we can maybe find some funding or advertising or build an audience big enough to, to do some crowdfunding, you know, we can do that. But, you know, it's something that does have a shelf life in its current state. Yeah. Deborah, did you want to ask another question? I do, I do. I, um, I, I'm so impressed with the work you're doing and the quality and everything, and I, and I think it's such an important topic. Um, and th- so t- have you had sponsors? Um, uh, you know, how are you? What's the game plan for taking it to the next level so that you can focus on it 100%? Yeah, I mean, one of the things that gave me kind of the confidence or the uh, stupidity to go ahead with this was that um, I listened to, I'm an avid fan of podcasts, and there's a few, there's one in the US and there's a couple in the UK that have successfully started in their front rooms and gone on to to monetize themselves. Um, And it is something that's happening more and more regularly. Um, There are, 
you know, if you can build an audience, um, then advertisers will come to you. And there's things like, you know, if you create videos on uh, YouTube that do well, there's there's monetization. We have an affiliate deal with um, Audible. So, you know, we do encourage people that listen to the show to go on to Audible and sign up for the 30 day trial. You can delete it straight away, but every time someone delete goes there and uses our code, we get like something like $7, which is not a lot, but it helps because the running costs, the hosting, the video, the you know music that we use, we have to buy, images we have to buy. So, you know, even though that those little bits help, and also it's just getting the word out, really. If we can get a big enough audience, um, there are opportunities to, to get funding and, and things like that, really. Yeah. So, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do tweets for you. Oh, fantastic! Yeah. <laughs> Try to help. Yeah. So, so De Deborah is, is is massive on social media. Um, make, Antonio and I are, are, are avid social media users, but Deborah's taking it to the next level. Um, yeah. So you, you've got Deborah's account behind you. Like, um, <laughs> Fantastic. I mean, I think there's there's a few ways that people can help. We do have a donate button, so if yeah. people do find value in the content we create, then there's that. Um, obviously, spread the word, you know, just retweet our stuff. But one of the things that helps yeah. most to get the word out is, you know, if you do listen to our show, and you use an Apple device, you, you use iTunes, just go on and leave reviews. And that is such a massive boost to us. I mean, when people have done that, there have been days where we've had a thousand downloads in one day. Um, so that, and, and that basically wow. pushes us to the front of the featured lists and things. But that, you know, that's a massive boost for, for us and, and the content that we produce, getting it out there in the world, really. A thousand downloads is a, is a sizable um, yeah, quantity. That's that's great going. I mean, I think people forget quite how many people are are dyslexic and and what you know what a large audience you actually potentially have. So um, yeah, I think crowdfunding is an option. Um, certainly, something like Kickstarter yeah. or or Indiegogo or GoFundMe could, with the right business case, um, yeah, possibly provide you with that kind of. Seed that you, you know, seed capital that you need to to keep it going for at least you know another year, eighteen months as you build momentum. Yeah, um, you know, I'm always keen to see this kind of stuff out there because there's not enough of it. Um, mm. And I know that you're you're obviously entrepreneurial because you've you you've had an you got an angle into um, to the fonds and and, uh, and 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 we were talking about it um, on IM a while back and and you saying oh it's quite difficult but then you got a you, you did an interview with his character Andy <laughs> Zipser um, which I thought was great actually you know it's a it's a positive um, role model for dyslexia for dyslexic kids um, I know that Henry Winkler is dyslexic himself and is um, a good, you know, it's a really good spokesperson for dyslexia. Also, really hard to get hold of, as you, you and I both know. So, um, so how did you how did you manage to pull that one off? Um, I mean, we we got followed by the Hank Zipser account, and I just was thinking, I'd really like to connect. Um, and and I, you know, the show's for kids. Yeah. But I watched it, and it's fantastic. It's so funny, and it's you know something that I can really relate to. Um, and I'm just I'm just always looking for for interesting ways to, to promote dyslexia and to, and to reach people. And I just thought, you know, it's something that I've never seen done before. You know, you, you get all of these, um, you know, ideally we like to interview people on the radio, but you get all of these magazines where they do an interview and they just kind of had, we asked this, they said this, we asked this, they said this. And I just thought it would be a really interesting thing to, to interview the character rather than the actor that plays yeah. Hank Zipser actually interview the character because that gives you a world of possibilities of of things that this character could say and it actually becomes much more creative and it was a really fun interview I mean if you read it, it was great so oh, yeah. yeah I mean we just have ideas and we're, we're constantly reaching out to people some people ignore us um some people don't get back to us but you know they were really happy and really helpful actually to to, to kind of accommodate our crazy idea of interviewing a fictional character so you know if you throw enough you know throw enough ideas out there some of them will land on people i guess that's kind of what happened really uh, sean uh when you when you were when you were building uh, uh, all this all all this idea um, around your your podcast 
and, and then when you started to publish uh, the, the first ones, I'm sure you were getting you know feedback from people, mm -hmm. and from from being from listening to them, did you made any changes? Did you have you able to incorporate some of those suggestions in in your idea? Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that? <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, I guess I guess there's um, a cultural divide in podcast listening. Um, podcasting in the US is um, a very, very, very mature market. I mean, you have things like uh, Serial, which was a massive podcast and it was getting, I know, five million downloads a week and things. And when you do go to the US and you say, I, I produce a podcast, people know exactly what you're talking about. In the UK, they're like podcast is that video is that I'm not quite sure I've heard of that word but I don't know what it is um and so I'm a podcast listener I'm used to you know I have a podcast which is five days a week which is an hour and a half a day and I listen to that I probably listen to five podcasts a day um and so for an, a, a British audience um the podcasts we were doing which I thought were quite short which were about 45 minutes everyone was just saying they're too long they're too long where am I going to find 45 minutes to, to listen to a show um so uh, they've become a lot shorter now um, and I think that's good I, I mean I think they were full of lots of information and unfortunately I have to cut out some stuff but they're really concise and you can kind of sit down listen to them absorb the information get the inspiration learn a bit, a bit more about these people and then kind of go off so that's I guess one of the the changes that we've made um, but also I mean I, I I'm always striving to get something that's really entertaining and you know one of the things that I want to do with the the podcast as well is I don't just want to create content that dyslexics want to listen to or read I want it to be a place that is just full of great content um, and the fact that it's made by all about dyslexics is kind of a secondary thing it's like I don't know in the US if you know about uh, we have a magazine called the big issue and it's basically a magazine that homeless people sell um, and it could have been a magazine that was all about homeless issues, but it's, you know, they take the best bits of all magazines that are out there, Time Out and Rolling Stone, and it's become a credible place where bands will say, yeah, I got an interview in, in The Big Issue. And that's kind of what I want the, pod, the Codpast to become, a place that has just got great content. So that's why we take ideas from BuzzFeed, you know, we take ideas from places like Vice. We, we just want fantastic content. Um, and that's what I strive to do with the, 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 the podcasts that we do, for them to be podcasts that are just great podcasts. Um, so we've changed the format a bit because it's, it becomes very easy to tell the same story every show. You know, most people's stories are, are relatively similar. You know, you had a hard time at school. Maybe you got found out at school. University was better. Then you went to work and you had problems again. So, you know, we want to continue going and we can't keep telling that story so it's about finding a, a, a story that dyslexia is a theme that runs through the story but it's finding just very very interesting stories that are inspirational and of interest to people outside the the dyslexic community so when you know they they hear about these people that have done amazing things and some of these things have done because their mind works in a different way. So when they're thinking about someone who's dyslexic, instead of thinking, right, that's just a guy who mixes his B's and D's up, you might think, well, actually, that was a guy that because of the way he thought, he had a, a fantastic way of thinking about an issue that we were all having. And he solved it in an instant because he was he was thinking with a totally different part of his brain. So, I mean, those are the changes that we're making to the show. And we're just we're going to continue to make those till it's a fantastic show, regardless of whether it's about dyslexia. It's just great content. Yeah, I, I, I'd echo that. I mean, it is. I, I, I came to it because of my, my personal interest, but actually I'm, I'm sticking with it because actually you, you are creating compelling content. And I, I think that's something that's really um, a credit to you. Uh, it's, it's really interesting. It's, it's good quality content. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there, as you alluded to, that's really dry and very, very static. So I, I think it's it's really nice to to get such a, a really fresh take um, and 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 further to be such positivity uh, about the the benefits. You know, there's been the book, the gift of dyslexia, but but people don't talk about it enough. There's a common perception that it's sort of a curse. Yes, there are problems. Yes, there are things that we struggle with. Yes, there are times when we have a bit of a meltdown. But mm. also, you know, um, I wouldn't change the way I am. Um, I'm quite happy in my skin. 
it's taken a while to get there, but uh, you know, I think it's 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 important that we spread that um, yeah. message out there, you know, and and so that's why why um, you know I'm very keen to have had you on. Yeah, um, and I think I think that just needs to be done in a different way as well, yeah. because when I talk to my friends about dyslexia, their eyes just glaze over. Um, you know, when I actually started podcasting. Um, I actually started two at the same time. So one was the podcast and one was a comedy podcast. And I'd tell my friends, oh, I've started this podcast. And they'd be like, oh, what are they about? Like one's, one's about comedy and about dys- and then they see them get really excited. And then so the other one's about dyslexia. And they'd be like, oh, can you give me the link to the comedy one, please? <laughs> um, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so it's, um, you know, it, it, it's presented to a certain extent as a disability. Um, and that's something that turns people off. Um, so you need to to try and present it in a way um, that is kind of tapping into what people already want. I mean, I always take the example of Oxfam. Um, and when I was young growing up, if you said you got your clothes from Oxfam, you would have been a laughing stock. You know, that was that was an insult to say that you, you got your clothes from Oxfam. Now people proudly say, hey, look, look at this jacket. I got it for a fiver from Oxfam. And that change has been made not by sticking to what they were doing in the 80s, you know, showing these kids with flies swarming around them. That worked and that shocked people and then people get, became desensitised. And if you keep talking about dyslexia as something that is debilitate, debilitating, um, people just glaze over because they don't want to know about that. And and that's kind of what I, you know, I want to kind of move away that and pre- present dyslexia as this thing that's really cool. You know, I want dyslexia to be something that people put on their CVs where they would be putting French and German and I have IT skills, and I'm dyslexic. And that's something an employer will look at and go, well, actually, this is a job that suits that mind frame. Yeah. Um, and I think the other thing that I guess that is missing in the dyslexia space, which we're trying to do with the Copass, is there isn't one global resource that promotes just dyslexia. Um, there's lots of channels that promote kind of what they're doing um, and what they have to offer. But there's nothing where you could go on a site and find out what someone in Australia is doing with dyslexia or what someone in Uganda is doing with dyslexia. Um, And there's so much going on that is of benefit to people across the world. Like there's some stuff going on in the US that's fantastic. You know, there's um, a company called Understood. They have this um, dyslexic simulator. And, you know, a lot of the time people say to me, what's it like to being dyslexic? And it's one of those things, it's really difficult to explain because it's so much part of you. Yeah. But there's this simulator and um, you go on it and like they, there's, there's a few different things. There's one which is typing. And, you know, you say to people, yeah, just go and type. And they type, they, they think they've finished it and they look back and all the letters have changed. And they go back and they type again. And it's sometimes the first time that people have just said, wow, that's really tough, you know. Um, but that's something that, if you're just concentrating on what's in, for, for instance, South Africa, you never know about it. And so we're trying to just search for stuff that's going on, which is great from all over the world, and just have this one place where we promote everything. I mean, we're happy to promote absolutely anyone, you know, as long as it fits our remit, where it's mm-hmm. great content, it's new, it's innovative, and it's for people above school age. We, we want to work with absolutely everyone. Um, And that's kind of, you know, so if there is anyone watching that has content or wants to work with us or is doing anything similar to what we're doing, we we want to work with you, you know, because we just want this resource to have as much input as possible. Okay, so what's if if people are out there, what's the best way to get in touch with you? I mean, the usual Twitter, Facebook. uh, If you go to the blog, there's a contact form. uh, Email me, uh, the codpast at uh, the codpast at gmail dot com. Um, so any any of those channels, um, just, just 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 say hi. Yeah. Okay, we're we're, we're pretty much at the, the end of our half hour. I uh, just want to say thank you again. It's been brilliant. And uh, that reference to that simulator, I've tried it. It's excellent. Really good. Thank you because you opened my eyes to that. <laughs> so uh, absolutely great. Uh, look forward to having uh, you on for the Twitter chat. We'll we'll catch up with you shortly. Thank you again. Thanks, Sean. Thanks. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Good job.